Raise your hand if you have played a sport before. Let it be at your school, at a sports club, or even on a Saturday morning with your friends or family. I see we have a lot of athletes here, that's great. Well, I want you to imagine this, whether you've been a player or not, okay? You can close your eyes or you can keep them open, it's fine. But you and I are at a volleyball court and we're playing the semifinal against a powerful team. This is the kind of team that you hear about, the ones that somehow always get to those finals undefeated. And well, we've all met a team like that, haven't we? I certainly have. And well, we're playing them now. So the game is about to start, everyone's getting ready, and they get to serve first. They do so, and you see the ball approaching our side of the court, which means it's time for us to get ready and give our best, time for the team to have each other's backs, and time for you to take this opportunity and turn it into success. However, instead of you taking control of your mind, your body, and do everything you need to do to get to that ball, you see it taking control of you. You start to get stressed. You start to get nervous. You're doubting yourself. And so the ball, a noise you're familiar with, now scares you. And your mind is playing all these tricks on you. And you just can't concentrate. But it, it's making you remind all those times your coach yell at you saying, track the ball, help your team. And so you're terrified. But after a while, you're able to jump back to the present and I think you might be a psychic because your coach is saying the same thing right now. But you try to calm yourself down, you try to think, you try to listen. But all you can tell is that the ball is coming at you very fast. And so you can feel how you start to lose control of your body and it's now your instinct making those decisions for you. But you swing your arms up and you make contact with the ball. And so you say to yourself, oh my God, thank God that didn't hit me in the face. But that thought is completely erased from your mind as soon as you see that ball hit the ceiling. And that is when you realize that you gave the point to the other team. So now you're feeling embarrassed, you're feeling guilty, like you disappointed your team and your coach. You feel like they hate you, all right? But you have to get, you have to get your head in the game because they get to serve again. So you need to do it all over again from the top. But you see, that thought only puts more pressure on you because you already made a mistake and you feel like everyone is placing their attention on you, just waiting for you to make another one. And you're terrified. Now, you can open your eyes if you close them. If psychology taught me something, is that it is important to undo stress on your participants or any feeling of anxiety. So, in order to lower your cholesterol, your cholesterol, your cortisol, here are some cute pictures of my dog and animals to lower it. But well, you see, when we talk about the relationship between physical activity and mental health, most, if not all of the time, it's about how sports have a positive effect on mental health, how participating in a physical activity increases your self-esteem, lowers your anxiety and your depression. And it is true, I've experienced these effects myself. Going to volleyball practice really helped me clear my head when I was feeling overwhelmed with IV and all the responsibilities that I had to do. But what about the effect that our current mental health can have on our athletic performance? Because you see, being an athlete, it's not only practice and training, no, 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 no. Especially those are collegiate, professional, and Olympic levels, where the level of focus is demanding and the pressure that they put on themselves is intense. Take as an example a college athlete whose scholarship depends on their athletic performance. They constantly have to provide good results to keep the scholarship and essentially be able to afford the university. But at the same time, they need to maintain good grades in order to stay in the team in the first place. So what happens when we have a poor mental health and we're placed in a situation like this? Well, the story that I asked you to imagine was actually the first time I played in a volleyball tournament back in Argentina 2017. My story shows you the anxiety, the stress, the self-doubt and everything that can occur to an athlete when he or she is inside of a court. 
My mental health was definitely not the best at that point. I had low self-esteem, I would doubt myself a lot, I would scold myself for making mistakes, and at the end, I would feel like I just didn't belong anywhere. My poor mental health had transferred all those negative thoughts into my life in the court and bugged me every step I took. I simply couldn't get my head in the game. So, this is something that athletes can feel, and it's something we call confirmation bias, because it essentially is when your brain is, play, is playing tricks on you just to make you believe a belief is true, right? And it ignores all the information and evidence there is that would contradict it. So in my case, it would highlight everything that would make me feel insecure, and it ignored the progress and the hard work I had put in that season just to make me believe that I wasn't good enough. So, this confirmation bias phenomenon usually goes hand in hand with something called catastrophizing. Now, catastrophizing is when an individual feels prompt to accept or assume the worst possible conclusion. So, in my story, you can see how I could swear my team hated me and that I disappointed everyone and that I was never, ever, ever going to be good enough. But you see, athletes can encounter many different struggles that we don't really talk about. And these include personality issues like perfectionism. And this one is very important because it essentially does not allow the athlete to enjoy the sport and laugh at their silly mistakes. There is athlete identity, and so athlete identity is the extent to which an athlete identifies themselves within the athletic role and looks to others for confirmation. Now, some athletes, they view their role as an athlete as a proportion of their whole identity. They consider themselves as son, daughters, mothers, fathers, painters, workers, etc. But for others, it takes up most part of their identity. So what happens when they get told, your injury is too serious, you cannot play anymore? Boom, personality crisis, because they don't know who they are anymore. There's also mental health disorders, such as body image, and you see athletes need to function at high levels, so they are asked to gain weight, lose weight, get fit, get muscle, make a certain weight class and that can be so overwhelming for them. And usually, these can go hand in hand with eating disorders. And so with eating disorders, they are asked to watch their diet because they have to be healthy. So they have to cut their favorite food sometimes, they have to diet, sometimes they have to eat more than they like to, just to be able to resist the training. Now, on top of that, there is low self-esteem, and this one, athletes and non-athletes can experience it. And this one is very important because a bad day, a bad week, a bad, I don't know, game, they make a mistake, or even a low score on a test can really influence the way they see themselves. On top of that, <laughs> there's also depression. And depression is very serious because it essentially does not, it takes away the spark of playing a sport. And so the athlete now sees that sport that they used to love once as a burden. And that is such a drastic change in their mindset. There's also sleep disorders, overtraining, because in their desire to be so good, they practice so much that they end up feeling demotivated and exhausted. And the last one, ADHD. Now, a surprising amount of athletes have ADHD. And there are struggles that they face that we don't really talk about enough, and these include the medication issues. They take medications because they cannot concentrate outside or even inside of the court. However, medication can work differently at different levels of stress. That is, if they work well at practice, if they take them before a game where the level of stress is much higher, the effects can be completely different, or they might not even work. Alternatively, if they don't have a proper medication that works on them, they have to face the side effects on top of dealing with their 
disorder at the same time all by themselves. So it is important to have a support system for that. However, having ADHD and being an athlete is not always bad because a study on baseball players with ADHD actually showed that those who had stopped taking their medication for the sport actually showed greater results. And so they were more, they were more unpredictable, they, their reflexes were much faster, and so all of these are strengths in the sport. Now, what I want you to gather from this is that athletes are human. Just because they play a sport, it does not make them immune to mental health disorders. Okay, so what can we do to ensure that the athletes in our community can truly give and have high performance when the ball is in our court? Well, a study carried by Chang and other researchers in the Department of Athletic Medicine actually showed that those who had lower levels of self-esteem and sensation-seeking in athletes were, had a higher risk of developing depression, anxiety, social anxiety, and negative physical symptoms, all of which can impede performance. So, in order to ensure that the athletes in our community can have a high self-esteem and can truly feel confident and comfortable to take risks, what can we do? Well, if you're a coach, you can be present in the life of your athletes, okay? Check up on them. Build that safe environment for them to express themselves. You can also implement healthy habits among, in the practices, right? You, maybe a five-minute meditation before or after practicing can do great res results. Um, if you are a teammate, building that healthy relationship with your other teammates is essential. Okay, words of encouragement or even a pat on the shoulder can do a big difference in a game. Okay, if you are a parent, support and listening without judgment is a great way to start. So I understand that being a parent and learning that your son or daughter has a mental health disorder can be terrifying, but Building that safe environment where they can express themselves and be honest is essential. And finally, if you are the athlete, talk about it. Find someone who you feel comfortable and confident with so that you can talk about how you're feeling. Are you worried? Are you stressed? Talk. You can also adopt healthy habits, such as meditation, yoga, doing handcrafts, whatever you want, as long as it's healthy, obviously. And finally, you can ask for help. It is better to work on things with people collectively than alone if it gets too hard, and that's fine. But try to believe in yourself. You see, there is this quote I really like by Henry, Hen Henry Ford that goes, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So essentially what it's talking about is that our mindset dictates on our outcomes. So what we think can be empowering and inspiring or toxic and destructive. So I hope that after this talk, all athletes in our community can truly give it their all. They can move forward with their mistakes and essentially enjoy the sport when the ball is in our court. Thank you.